Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests. The story I will tell you today may be old news for many of you. Still, I decided to use it as an excuse to reflect on two important things. First, even in our days, with all the overly organized science and sophisticated technology, we can still get some knowledge about the world we are living in from very unexpected sources. Just like in the time, times of Vikings or the age of exploration. The second point I hope we all will take home today is that it's very important for every one of us and for us as humankind to be aware of and cautious about what footsteps we live in this fascinating world. This story began in 1992 when a cargo ship headed from Hong Kong to Tacoma, Florida through the Pacific Ocean was hit by a fierce storm and lost several containers. Eventually, the containers broke and released what was inside. Green frogs, <laughs> this passing around. Red beavers, blue turtles, and yellow ducks. Sorry. <laughs> Here there are friendly floaties produced by the company named the first years. There were 290,000 of them liberated <laughs> The moment they got into the water, they become flotsam, marine debris. Interestingly, interesting enough, only one of them managed to become a celebrity. Guess which one? Yellow. 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 <laughs> this one is the cutest one, so why wouldn't it be the celebrity, right? <laughs> From the point when, where they were released, they started traveling the world. <laughs> Ten months later, some of them <laughs> landed in Alaska, others in North America, in Hawaii. Some of them managed to move north and get, get into the North Atlantic. In 2007, 15 years after the spill, some of them were washed off the shore in the United Kingdom. Many more of them are still there, drifting in the water of the world ocean or maybe stuck somewhere. By the way, if you find one from the original spill, you can get about $1,000 for it. <laughs> so we have our story. We have our small soldiers coming over there. We have our celebrity. We need a hero. And we have one. Please meet Dr. Curtis Ebesmeyer, the oceanographer who managed to track the fate of these little creatures for years and miles. <laughs> Of course, he wasn't alone. He got some help. And with this story, he was able to get better grasp on path and behavior of the ocean currents. As a matter of fact, he has rediscovered a very important phenomenon, which are called ocean currents gyres. There are several of them in, the, in every ocean. I'm only showing you two of them, which are in the North Pacific Ocean. A gyre in oceanography is a large system of rotating currents, especially wind-driven ones. They're like snakes biting their own tiles, tails, sorry, tails, except they're much more complex. They consist of two parts, a narrow belt of fast-moving water, and much slower, less organized, more chaotic interior. They carry the float some around and then bring them into this 
steel interior, where the drifting objects can live for decades, slowly de degenerating under the sunlight, sunlight and forming what's called garbage patches. <laughs> I'm showing you only one of them, which is the most famous one, because it's situated in between, between California. It's not famous because it's located there. I'm showing it to you because it's located between California coast and Hawaii. When you think about this name, garbage patch, when I first heard about it, I thought about carpet of garbage flowing there. Actually, it, uh, it takes about the uh, size of Texas. It's a huge formation. Or maybe like an island. But it's not true. It's not what it is. Not this. The scientists call it rubbish soup because it consists of cloud-like particles, micro plastics, very small, tiny, translucent particles. They cannot be, can, they, you, you cannot see it from satellite, maybe from the ship if the water is still. But if there, it, mm -hmm. it, it can harm our environment very much. Mm -hmm. There is much more behind this story than I was able to tell you today within the time allowed by Kate the timer. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope that I was able to serve you a gourmet appetizer, which would wake up your hunger for more information to chew on. With this in mind, I prepared the handout where I list all the sources, some facts, and all the sources I use for this presentation. And there is also a kids' menu, so please share it with your kids. I hope they will find it exciting and inspirational. I want to finish my talk with words by Kurt, Curtis Ebesmeyer. We will only survive upon this water-blessed planet if you listen to our original mother, the great ocean, and the song she sings to us in the music of the gyres. Mm -hmm.